Hello everyone and welcome back to Star of the Universe Tarot. This is the collective reading for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs for October 2020. Keep in mind that my videos are timeless, so whenever you come across them is when you're meant to see them. Um, the full moon readings are all posted if you have not check those out yet hold on give me one second okay sorry about that yeah uh the full moon readings are all posted i do those by elements air fire water earth if you have not checked those out yet they are for the full moon in aries on the first those are a little bit more um love directed if you're looking for something like that that um is basically what the lunar vibes will be directly affecting in your love life. Okay. Also keep in mind that these readings are general, so if it doesn't resonate, feel free to check your other placements. Oops, sorry. That was my dog. That's many. Yeah, feel free um, to check your other placements, your Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Go ahead. Uh, feel free to cross-watch as well. Um, for October, we're going to be using the Mystical Magnet Tarot. We're going to be doing um, kind of the same thing we did last month as far as using the same deck for the entire month, uh, just changing up the spread a little bit. Um... Right now, I'm just kind of getting the cards. I will explain to you what is what as soon as we start getting into the energies. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I don't think so. So basically what we're doing here is we're getting the overall energies, um, challenges, and anything that is uh, directly affecting the connection through the Alice, the Wonderland Oracle. We're going to be getting the situation, the challenge, the solution, outside um, influence, and a possible outcome. The mermaids are going to be clarifying any, um, surfacing any details that has to do with this outside influence. And then we're using the Oracle of Visions by Cyril Machete to get the summary of the entire spread, what spirit needed us to leave with. And then at the end of the reading, after, you know, clarifications and all that fun stuff, I'll go ahead and throw some cards out from the Universe Has Your Back Oracle for any final messages, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get in here. We have Curiouser and Curiouser, Discovery, Inquiry, inquiry Weirdness, and Curiosity. Okay, Capricorn, so something has definitely caught your interest. We have, uh, supporting this energy, we have laws, not justice, and rules that are not fair. Give me one sec. Okay, sorry about that. Alright, so like I said, we have law is not justice, rules that are not fair, that is supporting the energy um, for curiouser and curiouser. Um, this card is kind of like... Um, the justice card in tarot so libra energy especially when you see the scales um justice has to talk um talks about balancing scales it also talks about righting wrongs as well as um karma and the biggest thing with karma especially in the earthly realm people have a hard time understanding that law as in 
physical law as in the rules that um, the laws of human nature basically between the um, written law is two different things so when people are getting their just desserts as far as karma goes and they're trying to figure out what did they do to deserve this um, there there's a there's usually a reason why there's usually a reason why okay so opening the spread we have the two of wands this is basically the land of indecision especially with this card because this two of wander specifically um because in the regular rider way tarot what ha um with the two of wands he's actually letting one go and pursuing one with the world in his hand what's going on here in this picture in particular um is that he actually has his legs wrapped around the old wand as well as examining the new wand while keeping the world on his lap. Basically, on sub, I'm going to take my cake and eat it too. That's fire energy. More fire energy. We have temperance as the challenge. Sagittarius energy. This talks about divine timing. Um... Divine timing, healing, um, possible soulmate energy, depending on what cards pop out here. Okay, we have the Queen of Wands, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. This is the, the solution. So, um, the Queen of Wands is actually um, a very charismatic person. She... She stands, she stands in her own power, but she's also very flirtatious. She takes on um, very feminine and high sexual appeal. She also... Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the word for it. She doesn't need nobody to tell her what she's got going on, basically. Okay, and then we have the Seven of Swords. This is deceptive energy. This is air, um, swords energy is air energy. That's Libra, um, I think specifically the Seven of Swords is Libra energy. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, not Libra, Gemini. Gemini energy, Libra, Aquarius. This is going all in too fast and having a half ass plan and not really um, possibly not even caring which way the tables um, tip or turn at this point you're just watching and waiting watching and waiting this is the the hidden influences so this could be your person Okay, we have Lumeria Returns, Earthly Spirituality, Community, and Ocean Conservation. Yearning, longing for someone, undesired separation, and pinning. And vulnerability, open your heart and allow yourself to be tender. You're you're going back and forth on whether to let whether it is, um, I was gonna say grounding energy, <laughs> whether it's like um, I'm not wrong, but that's not the words I want to use. Um, like hermit energy, like going into hermit energy. You're going into heavy contemplation to really ground yourself. And you're grounding yourself based on this energy, based on this yearning and longing for someone. Because there's some type of pinning here that's leaving you vulnerable and out there. See, like, yeah, you have all these swords. It seems like protection, but it really is deceptive energy. And to me, this is just you're masking, you're masking your feelings with your thoughts. 
So it's, it, which leaves you basically extra vulnerable because you're lying to yourself now. It could be that you're lying to yourself about yearning for this person or that you're lying to this person that you're yearning for them and you're not. Like, um, I don't know why I heard pity sex. I'm so sorry. Um, but I meant like, <laughs> like a pity party. That's what I meant. But I guess that could go either way, right? You know better than I do. Um... If it is that, somebody's getting hella drained, like, coming over to save the day all the time, and it's really leaving them in a very uh, vulnerable position. The possible outcome, we have the Six of Wands. That's a victory card. That, uh, that's also recognition. And you have the Fool. Um, Leo, Sag, Aries, and the Fool is Aries, Aqua. Okay, let's do some clarifications. Why is the two of wands here? For this, okay, we have the hierophant clarifying the two of wands. This is Taurus energy. This talks about, um, this talks about higher, higher learning, raising, um, Raising in spirituality and also um, a higher a higher sense of commitment. Okay. Tell me more about the Hierophant and the Two of Wands, please. The Knight of Coins. Okay. This is a uh, Virgo Capricorn. Uh, Taurus energy um, and it came upside down so this tells me one or two things one you are either a completely stopping yourself from offering anything even in a at a slow snail's pace solid to this connection or or you feel like you've already invested too much into this connection and it's gone on long enough. Either way, with it upside down, I feel like this is um, this energy is what's stopping. Can you tell me more about the Queen of Wands and yearning? And temperance, please. The Seven of Wands. Yeah, you're really taking a defensive um, position here. This is um, more fire energy, Leo, Sag, Aries. You're, yeah, you're defending yourself possibly from this Queen of Wands. You could be dealing with the Sagittarius. You could be dealing with the Taurus as well we, as far as majors go. Aries, Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Taurus so far. L Libra. Gemini, Aquarius, yeah. Can you tell me more about the Seven of Swords? The Will of Fortune, okay, yeah. You're defending, you're defending yourself and you're defending your abundance, your energy, your, um, it could be possible that the reason why you're such, um, in a vulnerable state is because there is something really fragile um, in the midst here. Um, it could be a business. It could be a new relationship. It could be just um, your energy and your abundance in general. Um, Wheel of Fortune, that's Leo energy. Um, yeah, like, okay, because it's crazy. Because you see, the snake is actually wrapped around... Um, wrapped around... The Wheel of Fortune and what's actually left here is the tail end of of what I want to say was a very um, a very toxic cycle 
like because the snake always represent that could represent um that could um, represent like third party situations someone with malintentions um a third party energy that's um self-sabotaging or that's trying to keep you from moving on without really offering anything so with vulnerability the seven of swords and the will of fortune you're learning to let go of this deceptive energy and defend yourself because you know you're in a vulnerable state while this will of fortune is spinning in your direction Tell me a little bit more about the Six of Wands and the Four Cards, please. Okay. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, pretty much same thing. We have the Eight of Cups here. Uh, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. Um, clarifying the Six of Wands is your victory is in walking away from anything that is toxic, anything that is no longer serving you. Um, with the moon here up top, it could be also um, anything that may have been held secret anything that needed to be unveiled um there is victory in this there's no more um there's no more smoky trails there's no more deceit there's um for clarifying it it should be like this it's like you're basically walking into your into your success you're walking away from toxicity to walk into your success. Okay, and then clarifying the full, we have the Nine of Cups, which is wish fulfillment. This is you taking back your power, knowing that you successfully protecting yourself while you took this leap of faith. While the Wheel of Fortune was spinning in your direction so that you could reach your wish fulfillment. Wow. October, Capricorn, October. Okay, let's, let's read what Cyril Machete has to say. We have number 52, and that is Direction purpose, objectives, and taking a first step. If one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with success, unexpected in common hours. Henry David Thoreau. Purpose and direction, goals and plans for the future. Without these, our life would be stagnant and have little meaning. Having something to aim for, to achieve, to look forward to, no matter how small, is the difference between a day-to-day -day existence and living a fuller life. Reading, learning, seeing, experiencing something new and setting goals is a journey to tomorrow. Even the longest journey starts with one step, with one first step. Consider the reasons why the options, and the chosen direction, and let your journey begin. Oh my god, how exciting. My heart is fluttering, Capricorn. It's so cute. It's not, I'm sorry, that's like, it's not an understatement, but like, it's really empowering. It's not cute. It really is you, like, getting back to business. Getting back to business and reclaiming the abundance that's yours. Any final messages for Capricorn? Okay. The Eight of Cups wanted to fly forward. You saw that? <laughs> the key to prayer is to forget what I think I need. And that's I think that's a part of this Eight of Cups energy, especially because it wanted to like um, come with it. Maybe a big part of the toxicity is thinking is, is letting go of control, thinking that you always need to know 
what and how the outcome will be. Just take a step towards the journey. My happiness is a direct reflection of my level of faith in the universe. And I think that you're really coming into your power as far as that goes, Capricorn. Like, it's like like you're glowing. Like, you really are starting to, to feel your own power. And then when I lean on certainty and faith, I change my mind about the world I see. And I let go of the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. I knew you were getting... It, it's so funny. The moment I seen this one, I was, I was thinking, I'm surprised this one didn't come out. And of course, it was in the... It was in the bottom of the deck. It's time to open your third eye. Stop looking into the 3D. Stop looking into the 3D, which you're looking for in the 5D. And stop staying in the 5D. Well, what's, what's manifest, what you want manifested in 3D is manifesting. In other words, don't stay too stuck in your dreams and don't be too stuck in the future and don't dwell too much on the past. If you've analyzed your situation and, and you know, understood your lessons and why, you know, this person is no part, no longer part of your life, you know, the faster you can start propelling into deeper waters and really get your journey starting or started. Okay, Capricorn, I hope this helped. And I will see you for the mid-month check-in. Bye.